Cody back to back wins on the set side the playoffs. <laughs> Must be pretty happy with the way things are going. <laughs> I think I, just, I, I think you have to build into every season. I think um, I think happy enough that the, the stuff we're working on, the stuff that the, we're trying to build with the team is. is this moment is looking okay, but I think in any football season, people figure things out about your team, and you have to move on to the next bit and the next bit. And you have to keep evolving and develop. And um, but at the moment, you know, I, I, we are um, playing like we'd like to play to try and dominate the game if we can. Try and have most of the ball. Try and create the most chances and. Um, and of course, that's no guarantee of winning a football match, but um, generally we're happy enough. I, you know, we've, I was looking at my board today with I think seven injuries. You know, will, will you ever get a fully fit squad? Probably not. But um, but yeah, it's all right. We, we're doing okay. I've always said you're accumulating points really in the first dozen or so games. Just see where you are after 12, 15 games, and. Um, Hopefully you're within touching distance. You know you're a win or two away from being where you want to be, and you're not looking over your shoulder after that many games. But um, I think generally happy enough with the, with the way the team's developing, really. And he must have been happy with the way they responded on Saturday. Not always the easiest play against ten, but second half when you change it around, you completely dominate. Yeah, it's not, I generally thought we dominated first half as well, to be honest, and yet we scored goals. And I know sometimes it can um, the goals create the narrative of the, of the game, I suppose. But um, I wasn't too concerned going. You don't want to go down to a goal, but you know, it was from a second phase of a long throw in that we didn't really clear, went through Daniel's legs and went into the bottom corner. Um, but I, I, I felt pretty relaxed that we were. On top, and we were, you know, we were going to. We had a long time to, to get the goals back, and so we just kept doing what we worked on, and uh, we got there in the end. Yeah. Like you said a few weeks ago, you know, I could be sitting here in three or four weeks' time with obviously with Ross Stewart fit. That one's by the yeah. by, but with three or four strikers, I'm wondering how I'm going to get them all in. I mean, that must be a problem now, trying to get everybody, everybody in there. some game time. Yeah, but not quite there because the strikers aren't. Right up to speed yet, you know. So Rusin still hasn't got his visa, so he's not going to travel um, for this one. But um, we'll get to that point, I think. I think um, Young Bursto, you know, he looks again, as I said, he's exciting, he's, he's, he's full of enthusiasm, he's fast, he's sharp, he wants to score on the training ground. He's, he has to learn how we play, of course, and what we do and where he needs to be at certain times. But um, yeah, it's. It, I think, I think, the attacking options of the tide are obviously much much better, and yet they have to fit into the structure of how we play. We can't just because we've got like a centre forward who wears number nine on his back or whatever. We change everything about what we do. We have to try and um, show them how we play, where they need to be, how they need to become part of the the build of the team, and um, and then where they need to be when we. So it's either. Clark dribbling and travelling and where you need to be or it's playing through the middle and um, when do you come and link up and when do you run away behind the opposition so all of them things particularly with the young player that he is he's, uh, he needs to learn all that and he's, he's what's good for us is he looks like he is a learner he's, he, he wants to he wants to please just going back there's no problem with the visa is there do you, do you see it coming through Oh, yes, and we're surprised it's not through. I think it. Um, I think there was every expectation it was going to be here this morning, really. But it's you know, been out training, come back in, and it's still not here. So um, it's it's just, a, I suppose, a little bit frustrating for him. But it, it's not that frustrating because I can see when I'm speaking my fluent Ukrainian to him that he's uh, he's happy to um, he's happy to to do some training, really. He probably needs to get up to speed. He needs. He hadn't played a game for three or four weeks, um, so I don't think it's a major issue, and I don't think it's an issue, you know, in his mind. I know he, you know. So I asked him if he wanted to come, watch the team, be around in the hotel, 
um, he'd rather stay here and have two days training and because um, he knows that somewhere down the line he when he gets put on the pitch he has to be fit and ready and um, so yeah it's, it's not frustrating because he wouldn't be starting at the moment because you know he's had probably three training sessions with us and um, he doesn't speak any of the language and so it's not as if he's bouncing around having fun with all the lads out there and it's 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 great camaraderie and he's understanding everything he's he's on the periphery of it a little bit and you can see how fast and sharp he is but he's he's um he's not really understanding the tactics of it yet at the moment so it's not a problem that he's not integrated because he's his situation you mentioned the injuries a couple of Peter Aquar and Dennis Serkin right now, yeah well, I think, I think I said after the game, Dennis is going to be a few weeks, you know, potentially next international break. Let's wait and see. Uh, might be sooner than that, but, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, who else? Pierre. Um, so he, it, it's, it's a, I've told you what it was after the game. It's a bang, really. It's a, it's a hematoma. It's a dead leg. It's a, and it, it, within five minutes of the game starting, he got another bang right in the same place, and it was just too sore for him. And, um, and yet it is quite swollen, and, and uh, as these things seem to do, they sort of filter down the leg. And so if it's just above the knee, it's, you know, it's in his calf now, rolling down towards his ankle, and it's a bit swelling. So. Um, he probably just needs a, I don't know, ten days or something like that to to uh, to let it all settle down, um, getting plenty of ice on it or hot baths or whatever they do for him these days. It, um, but I don't think it's anything that we have huge concerns about, other than the frustration for him that he's not he's going to miss a game or two. And I know you've been back there already with uh, with someone, but Blackburn still still. Lots of memories and lots of connections for you. Yeah, a lot of players still playing. I mean, you know, there's obviously a change of you know some of the personnel have, have moved on. Some of the younger players who were on the cusp and a bit like we do at this club with the young players, we bring them up and train with the first team. You know, once or twice a week. And some of the better young players, that, you know, young Adam Wharton is obviously a very talented individual, but. Um, the young centre forward who, who, who scored a few goals from him as well. The, 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 some young players that have been around, but obviously this, still the core of the team is the team that I would have had. But um, yeah, watching them, they're a good team. They 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 um, know where they're going with the ball. They um, they've got good rotations and their passing lines and their passing movements. So. Um, it's, it's, it, as it was last year, it's a tough game. I, I thought we grew into the game second half, and with you know, did we lose it two nil? You know, Brereton rammed one right in the top corner from twenty odd yards. And the second goal was, you know, I don't think it was in debate. It was offside, but it was uh, it was given. It was from a wide free kick. But um, yeah, we have to go there and find a way to score. You know, and generally we can score, but. Um, yeah, it'll be a good game, a tough game. They had a good result at the weekend, and um, they'll be confident. And you know, as I've always said, sometimes it's difficult to win back-to-back -back games. And um, so, yeah, looking forward to the challenge of it. Really, it, you know, we're in we're in a good place at the moment, but so are they on, on the back of their victory. And um, so, yeah, it's just the next opportunity to collect some points. Hi, Tony. Oh. Um, just looking at the weekends. Um, Lewis Hamir, full time, is having a bit of fun with the crowd. Um, right. With the, the thing with the heart, um, how much has he kind of embraced it since he's been moved to this? To start with, I don't know what he was doing with the hat. What was he doing with the hat? <laughs> it was somewhat, there was a hat came off the pitch, so he was putting it on his head and taking right. it off. And all sorts, was he? Okay. With people and Good. <laughs> Listen, um, what do I think? I think he's a nice kid. I think he's. Um, I think he's trying to please. I think he's been told and shown that how hard the work is to be able to play in this team. Um, I think he's, he's embracing that. It's but it's not natural to him. Um, I think every time we put him on the pitch, he seems to have a, a, oh, a really good chance that he doesn't take. It would be great if he, you know, he was one on one against Southampton late on. Maybe he should have scored. He had. 94th minute the other day when he came on free header six yard box should have scored um, and yet we watch him in training and he has a, you know he's got a bazooka in his right foot he can whack it in the net it's, um, he can head goals he did pre-season he's headed a few goals for us so 
I just think it's a process we're going through with Amir. He wants to do well. Um, you know, he'll be frustrated, disappointed that we brought in another young striker who we put straight in the team. But basically, because the cultural difference between playing in Portuguese football and playing for Chelsea's, well, he's been on the first team in the Premier League, but Chelsea's under 21s is is a different culture, different requirements, and um, we think Mason's more up to speed to suit what we need at this moment but I think Amir is, a, is a, almost like a project that is going to bear fruit and lots of fruit I'm sure because he is a goal scorer and once that first one goes in I'm sure he's going to score lots of goals and he's going to force his way in the team and make it difficult to leave him out. And you mentioned there about Roussan um, and the language barrier and stuff like that, how difficult is that process of integrating someone from, the, from a completely different culture into, into the squad? Um, well, it can be. Listen, it, it, a lot of it's down to their personality, of course. Um, we're fortunate here that we already have a Ukrainian young player on our books who is helping us at the moment, and um, whilst trying to get on with his own career, of course, he's helping us have conversations with Naz. So, um, at the football will, will dictate in the end, you know, and I just think here he is in his first week here, still hasn't got a visa through. I know he's, he's constantly in with, with um, liaison officer to probably sorting out bank accounts and driving licences and it, can we get him a car, can we, you know, where's he going to live, what's he doing, a hundred things really. And um, so when that all settles down, you know, the visa's not an issue, he's had a couple of weeks training, he looks sharp as a razor, we'll be bringing him off the bench and hopefully he bangs some goals in and then the next game hopefully he starts and he's off and running. So, um, at this moment, he understands, he's happy, he's smiling, he's not sulking and thinking, why aren't I playing? I came here to play. He's, he's actually just happy to be here, enjoying the environment and, um, yeah, well, I'm looking forward to, to the somewhere down the line in the next few weeks when we think he's ready for the team and uh, we can put him in there and hope he um, he gets off to a good start. Just looking at your midfield at the moment as well, the, the difference Job's made since he's come in, um, obviously got Dan Neal in there, um, how important is it that that area of the pitch is, is as settled as it is in terms of the play you want going forward and defensively, because obviously you haven't shipped many goals so far this mm. so I think the loss of Equire is a blow to the team. I think. Um, you know, obviously contributed two goals against Southampton and he's shown how strong and powerful he can be winning the ball back and effective he can be. So um, he's going to be a loss for us, but I think young Job has um, the capacity to play in several different roles within the midfield. And um, and we, you know, we maybe should throw Trey into that, who's, who spends a lot of time in that central area of the pitch as well. So. Um, yeah, the midfield are doing exceptionally well. Dan Neal is just a young footballer who is growing every game he plays. You know, he's still going to be in his early twenties and have played two hundred odd games for the club. So, um, yeah, I'm happy with that position. I think they've got good understanding of the game. They're always asking questions. They always want to know about the rotations and the passing lines and how we get space and where we're going with the ball and what's, where's, where's the next pass so it's good for all the coaches that the young players are, are wanting to grow and develop very quickly and um, and hopefully they're enjoying the environment and, and playing in a team that can be successful. And obviously um, Blackburn tomorrow night, um, what kind of game are you expecting they'll, they'll give you? Obviously they beat Middlesbrough 2-1 at the weekends, um, what did you take away from that game that you'd be looking out for tomorrow? Well, the fact that they're good with the ball, they have they have a very definitive way of playing. Um, they've got some very talented individuals, and we have to be mindful of them qualities that they've got. I think um, I think the coach has, has changed them from the team that I would have coached, and yet I I, I think very positively. I think they they have really good rotations and in the way they bring players from wide areas inside and overload in certain positions on the pitch and so and that's it's quite clever and it gives them a, a fair bit of possession of the ball. Um, at times it can leave them a little bit exposed but we have to try and 
find the answers to that and, and hopefully punish them. But um, I, I see it being a good game of football with two pretty good football teams with good, good individuals.